Hi family, this is Drea with mine, our journey, mind, body, spirit, and today I'm going to show you how to make any plastic container into a planter. So this is a bigger plant, a bigger container. I got it for $2.99 at the 99 cents only store. It's a storage bucket, and I'm going to use it. plant this tomato plant which is in a two gallon planter and it definitely needs to be upgraded so what I use is a soldering gun and you got to be careful it does kind of stink and mine's smoking because it probably already has a little bit of plastic on it so I kind of do it far away usually these little round spots, like I'll make a hole through those. I'll do anywhere from about four or five holes, and it just depends on what, what I want to do. Like I wanted to keep it in the planter, then I'll probably not do very big holes. If I want it to be able to seep down to the soil, then I'll do bigger holes. In this instance, um, I was going to do just do the holes here on the side and keep this one in the bucket. I'm kind of contemplating if I should do that or make a really big hole and let it go into the ground. But I think I'm going to do it on the side because, sorry, it's beginning to be summertime. So I want to kind of keep the water in. I hope you guys can see this so yeah it's very smoky so I kind of try to stay out the way for that so I'm gonna go about an inch and a half up and once you get in there like it will make that little bitty hole if you don't have a soldering gun I got this at Harvard Freight for three dollars so it's very inexpensive and you can use tubs that you find like people are throwing it out maybe um, even big punch bowls that you're not using. I've used little toy buckets like with snowmans on them. It just depends. And then obviously a lot of people like to use the five gallon buckets. You can use the same thing. Five gallon buckets are a little bit um, thick plastic so it takes a while to get through but it's not that bad. So I'm making my holes about that big. And I am going to do four. And if you want to, if you don't want to, you know, keep going around, you could always like make a whole bunch of holes like this and then just start connecting them and then you just will cut a big spot out by kind of connecting the dots here. It's really whatever your preference is. Yeah, that's probably going to make it a little bit too big, but that's okay. So this is a good way to save money because containers like this, container planters like this, the cheapest one you're probably going to find is about $12 on this size. And I paid $3 for this one. And if you can, if you buy, you know, things at the thrift store, you could probably get it for even cheaper or sometimes people have containers inside the street or you could repurpose some stuff you already have any kind of kind of containers so let's see I got one more to go after I do that I just let it sit for a while before I actually plant in it to make sure that it's not hot anymore I don't want it connecting to the soil and if you're super particular and you know about what plastic you're planting in this might not be ideal for you. This is not considered food grade plastic or anything like that but it's pretty flexible. I think it's going to do well and by all means it's going to be a lot better than buying my tomatoes from the grocery store. Right? So I'm going to unplug this because this thing, I don't know how hot it gets but you can see it's smoking like crazy. 
So I'm going to show you some other containers that I've done the same thing for. So this is one. These two here were just kind of like some little party buckets that you probably would put chips and stuff like that. And I got these for $1.99 and I repurposed them because I already had them. I used them for some crafts I had before. And this is before I had the soldering gun. So then I didn't even heat the nail up. So it would, like I was going to say before, if you don't have a soldering gun, you can heat a nail up and, and kind of have the same effect. You just want to be careful that you don't get the nail too hot and burn yourself. And I actually just went ahead and took a hammer and a nail. It made a big old crack in it, but it was enough to give drainage. So that worked perfectly fine. With these walking cabbage that I still, this one I still haven't dealt with, with the white flies. So I'll do a video on that because I'm going to get it done pretty soon. But I made the soldering holes in there. And another way you can kind of make a hole into the bottom, if it's a little bit harder plastic, like for instance, sometimes the planter pots, they're really hard. I just throw it on the ground and give it a big crack. I don't think I have any, but like this one is really hard. This is a 199 one from the 99 only. And I was bottoming, bottoming them out because my wood chips are still pretty immature. So I'm not planting directly into my soil as of now. I have actually, I have planted some things in directly in soil, but not very much. So most of it's raised beds or I'm using the pots and bottom, bottoming them out. And then using, you know, my soil mixture and everything in there, but basically making a big hole so those plants can get through once they, once they, um, the roots get long enough, if they want to go down, they can. So I've done that with a few things with actually, I'll come over here and show you what I did that with. And that's an easy way if you don't have a lot of potting soil, and even if you're not doing the wood chip back to eating method, you can just kind of dig a hole. Sorry about that. You can just dig a hole in the ground a little bit, cut the bottom part or break it off, however you can do it. Just be careful that you're not breaking up the sides. Take the bottom part out and then put it where you want it to be. And then you don't have to use as much soil. It's like for instance, if you're using a, a tomato plant that's gonna be using a lot of soil and you only have a a, you know a certain amount of money you can do this and then you're not using as much soil and they're still going to be able to spread their roots down into the ground and it being on top like that it should soften up your ground even if you don't have wood chips but I suggest whatever you can do to ground cover around your pot would definitely help keep you know in case it's compact so for all my beans these are different kinds of green beans this is a purple pod green bean and my peas well not all of them but most of them these are ones I started indoors and I decided to not plant them in the ground to try this out but I do have some that are planted in the ground over here so there's some corn and peas planted in the ground I did sow some scallop squash seeds but um, they have not come up yet so here I have a container that I buried and bottomed out with the acorn squash and then a straight neck squash the same thing so then I used a really small container so this one was upside both of these were upsized from the containers they were in but this one has already set me a fruit and then I have some market mint that I planted in the ground Mint is a spreader, so that's probably not strongly suggested for anybody. But I have a lot of weed problems, so I said, hey, well, maybe I'm just going to pick my what kind of weeds I want. But I don't think the mint is liking it right there where it's getting too much sun. But it was only $2, and it had the little aquaponic soil in it. And I didn't put any other amendments in it just to see how it did so I'm signing off stay tuned for um, more episodes coming up I'm going to be getting together a market garden video that basically 
I'm not sure what the price range I'm gonna have on it, but it's, it's basically gonna be as close to free as possible. And it's going to be on all the plant items can be bought with the EBT food stamps. So this is Drea signing off. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment below. And let me know if you're making container gardens, what are you using? And hopefully this helped you out. And like I said, I got my soldering gun from Harvard Freight for $3. And if you have a coupon for the Harvard Freight, you can actually um, get something free on top of that because that's considered a purchase. Just a little heads up on that. So we're keeping thrifty. Bye-bye now.